Hey YouTube, POD7 here once again, with some more FTL, episode 3 already, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I think that's going to be a uh, very horrible thing for me to try to get over, is saying uh, followed by yeah, and maybe you guys have some helpful tint tips, tints? Some helpful tints, some helpful tips and hints to help me get over that kind of stuff. And I've already lost my train of thought. <laughs> it's pretty good for episode three, right? Uh, fighting in an asteroid field uh, at the moment. And just going with the uh, previously used strategy of... Uh, Ion blasts only, no drones, because the meteors can do the work for me. It's a slower battle that way, but uh, it saves on drone parts, so. And it looks like we're pretty low on fuel. I don't remember that happening. It's been a week now since I recorded uh, this run, so... I'm going to start getting kind of fuzzy <laughs> towards the end, <laughs> um, besides the result, obviously, since it's pre-recorded. Um, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> I got myself just in time. Uh, this rock fighter is going to be taken down pretty quickly. Uh, I hope in the future that uh, they make it to where you can... Yeah, I have one fuel, so for once I decide to take their offer, I think. Yeah, okay. <laughs> They're probably going to die from meteor strikes anyway, so. Oh boy, man, I am uh, forgetful today, <laughs> for sure. Uh, what was I saying? I really don't want to start this commentary over. <laughs> <laughs> it is 12.51 on Saturday, November 21st, 2012. So, still uh, recovering from Thanksgiving. <laughs> uh, about near OD'd on, uh, if you hear any weird noises, that's me shuffling my computer around. Uh nearly OD'd on turkey. <laughs> uh, my cousin Jeremiah deep fried a turkey and uh, it was definitely one of the best I've had in my entire life uh, without hyperbole. And just like that another enemy vanquished. Um, he, he used some Creole seasoning and uh, when I heard that, I was like, uh, don't really taste it. But then I read the, uh, the, uh, ingredients on the, on the shaker of Creole seasoning. And I could, I could see it or f I, I could understand the flavors better that way, knowing exactly what I was eating. And man, it was, it was fantastic. Um. Uh, Another pirate ship here. Uh, these next couple sectors, from what I remember, not much uh, really happens other than just fighting our way through. And if you haven't noticed yet, uh, I don't come in planning to say anything. I just kind of go off of what I see in the video, and if that brings something up, then I talk about it. Of course, I was incredibly fortunate for episode two that it was uh, being put together on Thanksgiving morning, so I had plenty to talk about. But now we're in the Christmas season, officially, super officially, I believe the term is. Um, Black Friday is come and gone, uh, before, but it, we still have Cyber Monday to get through. 
Uh, I picked up The Witcher uh, Enhanced Edition Director's Cut off of Steam for $2.49 American. And uh, at that kind of price, you know, I mean, it's worth getting it even if you don't know if you have the right specs on your computer to play it. Because it's like, oh, it's two bucks. Oh no, I won't be able to get that extra taco next time I go to Taco Bell, you know, so. Uh, it's a friendly NG ship. I think they, uh, their sensors or something were messed up, so they want us to lead them to where they need to go. And, uh, there's, I know there's bad results to it, but I think I've only ran into it once or twice, so I usually pick that quest up. Uh, I bought all their fuel, and I didn't see anything I liked, so we're moving on to... There you see me counting out <laughs> jumps. <laughs> uh, being able to see the paths from each jump uh, is an option, and you have to turn it on. It's not default. So uh, just make sure... Uh, either before you start a game, or... If you've already started a game, just hit escape or whatever your pause button is, quote unquote, and uh, go to options and it'll say something like something about paths and you just check that little box and it's good to go. Oh, just a kind of a dud jump there. Sometimes you'll just get there and it'll say wow, this place looks pretty beautiful, and then there's nothing to do. <laughs> so, oh, we got a boarding pirate ship here. And uh, I wouldn't say they're as dangerous as a boarding mantis ship, even though this is a mantis ship, it's a pirate ship. So their crew is pretty random and uh, the Mantis, their combat is doubled, but their repeat, repair speed is halved. So, uh, that's why they have boarding crews pretty much, uh, on every ship past Sector 4, I believe. Uh, sometimes you'll get unlucky and they'll be in, uh, Sector 1, but <laughs> otherwise, uh, but when it's a pirate ship, it could be anything. Uh, I mean, I've seen runs where they roll up on a Mantis ship that has pirate paint on the outside. And they have their sensors upgraded to where you can see inside the enemy's ship. And the only thing that was in there was NG. Like, two NG guys. So, it's always a crapshoot with uh, the pirate crew. Um... It seemed like I was getting ready, I was building up to something there, but I can't. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know. Uh, oh, The Witcher. That's right. Uh, yeah, I covered that part. Uh, I think I will use that. I toyed with an idea the last time I tried to start Let's Plays and playthroughs and stuff. Where uh, you would release a couple videos in your Let's Play, or playthrough, or walkthrough, or whatever. And then you do a um, much more casual uh, intermission style couple of series of videos. And uh, I went from Let's Play Shenmue on the Dreamcast to Let's Play Intermission Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. Uh, Ultimate All-Stars for the Nintendo Wii. And I... I think I had to delete one of those videos. I'm not sure. Because it said matching third-party content. <laughs> and the only thing it said was Capcom. It didn't give me any, like, reasons or anything. It just said Capcom. Uh, Capcom wasn't even uppercase. <laughs> it didn't have an uppercase C. It was just Capcom. Uh, but yeah, I think I'll try to do that with The Witcher. 
uh, if I can't figure out how to record uh, computer audio and my input mic audio, I'll probably just do input mic audio with no game sound. I know that's kind of lame, but uh, it's all about low effort <laughs> here on Playable on Death. And uh, just, I, I don't want to say the aim of this series is to get me more comfortable with my voice or to build charisma or any of that stuff. Uh, it's more of just getting a release of my thoughts out into the ether so that they're not taking up space in my own brain. Because <laughs> I, I have so many ideas and stories and characters that I keep in there and I don't want them to die. And just like our fuel reserves just did. Um, so, uh, yeah, getting a little personal here on <laughs> Playable on Death. Uh, and I, I know that's a terrible pun, but that's, you, you'll just have to eat it and like it because <laughs> that's, uh, that, that's the level, that's the par for the course of humor you can expect, uh, from me. I was not paying attention at all, but I think a slug ship gave us some fuel, or sold us some fuel, so uh, we should be okay. Oh, here's another bit of luck. Get a drone recovery arm, which means I can go balls to the wall with drones now. <laughs> uh, because after a battle, the drone recovery arm is I don't want to say 100% uh, sure, but I would say as close to guaranteed as I am personally comfortable going with, uh, in that after battle it will recover your drones at least one, if not uh, up to two, two or three. Uh, I know it was... At the, near the end of this run, it was picking up two, uh, uh, spoilers, <laughs> obviously, but, uh, so the, that was definitely, uh, the first bit of luck, and as you may have noticed, when the first thing I clicked on there, <laughs> oh gosh, I have to cough, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I don't have anything to drink. That was kind of stupid of me to go into almost a half hour <laughs> video without anything to drink. Let's see if this Coke can next to me has anything. Probably had a little bit. <clears throat> That'll probably just tear my vocal cords up instead of what I wanted it to do. Ooh, okay. <laughs> oh boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, total brain fart there for a second. Anyway, uh, I'm trying to think of something else Star Trek to bring up in this, and the only thing I can think of is uh, my completely worthless opinion <laughs> on the new Star Trek movie, uh, and the one that's uh, coming out next year. I was perfectly okay with the movie after I saw it, but I was pretty skeptical before. Um, I really did not like the direction of style 
that they went with the movie. I mean, uh, if you followed coverage of it at all, then you know about the lens flare problem (laughs) uh, that happened on that movie. (laughs) Or happened to that movie, I should say. Uh, (laughs) A very, a pretty funny story is uh, one of the guys that was... I think... (laughs) I can't remember if he was an assistant to the director of photography or maybe he was the director of photography, something like that. But uh he's actually he actually worked on the Angry Video Game Nerd movie. And for one of those interviews he told a story about how uh for one scene he's literally just standing in the background shining a flashlight at the camera. To get a lens flare, and that's that's just uh, obscene, <laughs> uh, especially when it would take I don't know four hours, maybe at the highest resolution to render or something like that. And there's the cutting in that movie is so fast paced. I mean, it would be on screen for literally four seconds. <laughs> So, I mean, I guess in a way I can see that saving time, but why even have it (laughs) in the first place, So, But I like the movie. I mean, when when you get into time travel stuff, uh, (laughs) you can go really, really wrong. And uh, I've decided to wait until the second movie to decide if I disagree with the way they went. Uh, I think getting Benedict Cumberbatch to play the villain in the new movie was fantastic. Uh, it's too bad it couldn't have happened. <laughs> he couldn't have been already filming it once Sherlock came out. Uh, and he hit it big. And then the movie could have came out a couple months later and made tons of money. Uh, Because in our current model of pop culture in America, if you don't capitalize on something, like if you release a song on YouTube, if you're not capitalizing on the fame that song garners by the end of its first play, you're already behind. And... That really sucks, in a way. (laughs) But at the same time, uh, it's kind of exciting. It's exciting and depressing. And I say it's exciting because we consume entertainment and art so fast now that you're constantly just being bombarded with all these different ideas and stories. And for me, at least... It sends my creativity into overdrive, which is why I'm doing these again, these videos, because I need to get some kind of release, otherwise I just cook in my own brain all day, and it is no fun uh, whatsoever. And just typing stuff, something out, uh, typing out, like, plot ideas and, uh, character arcs and stuff like that it only helps so much because I'm the only one reading that and oh my god that ship is terrifying Uh, what ends up happening when I do it for too long is I'll go back and read to make sure I'm following along with what I've already wrote And then it becomes three weeks, uh, pretty much 24-7, of me rewriting and editing stuff that's not even finished yet. And, uh, so, in an effort to get away from that, (laughs) and to actually finish something for once, uh, I am distracting myself by creating in other ways, if that makes any sense. Uh, I say as I'm 
commentating over <laughs> spaceships fighting each other in front of a sun. Uh, what just happened there was anytime you come to a sector and it's too close to a sun, the jump that you go to, uh, it'll send out waves of solar flares and that'll instantly guaranteed cause at least one fire to start on both ships. So, you really want to either get the battle over with as soon as possible, or uh, jump out of there as soon as possible. So, we finished that guy off. I think the fire helped a little bit. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to rewind or anything to see, but... Uh, yeah, it can be a real pain in the butt sometimes, because you'll get everything repaired like you just saw there, and I was getting ready to take off, and then, oh, you have a fire again. And since since this is a, a mostly NG crew who have lower health, uh, it can be really, really annoying. Here, am I going to get hit again? Yes, yes I am. <laughs> Oh man, I think I just decided to jump before I even put the fires out, but I don't remember. Um, yeah, I'm <laughs> like, screw that. And I think I jump into a battle. Oh god. Um, yeah, these scouts <laughs> are a nuisance. Absolute vermin. <laughs> Uh, especially when they have three shields. I don't think I've ever seen an automated scout with four bars of shield, but uh, our med bays beat the hell. But uh, I think, <laughs> weirdly enough, uh, med bay is probably the least useful system on the entire ship. <laughs> and that's goes for any ship I've played so far, so... Um, oh, our shields took a beating. Oh, man. Well, at least we don't have to worry about that scout anymore. Uh, anytime you have a fire in a room, if it gets to two, I recommend sending as many people in as possible. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I just sent uh, four people in there just to get going. Because <laughs> when you get like four bars of shields, if it gets taken all the way down like it was here in this asteroid field, it can take, even if you have an NG an on it, it can still take... Uh, I think I counted almost two minutes <laughs> to repair an entire uh, fully upgraded shield, so it's worth getting everybody in there and fixing it up, so. Okay. Oh, I helped somebody out of an asteroid field. <laughs> oh, it's Dustman. My friend Dusty. Yeah, that that's that that guy in the corner. That that was him. That was the Dusty from the last video. And he's playing Skyrim. <laughs> oh, he, he's playing Skyrim again. <laughs> uh, I guess he didn't like the first Skyrim, so he's playing the second Skyrim. Uh, I actually looked at his stats for that the other day, and I think it said 500 hours, and I caught myself being a humongous hypocrite, because I was like, holy cow, 500 hours, who would, oh, that's right, <laughs> I spent like an entire weekend without even eating, almost, playing Minecraft, <laughs> so, who am I to judge, right? Oh, that's another, I don't think I've mentioned that in this series, uh, what, the first, I think the second month 
had Netflix. Uh, they they posted uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation, the entire series on there, and I decided, hey, I'll watch it from start to beginning. It'll be cool. I ended up watching every single episode, all the way through, no skipping, even the boring parts, in three weeks. <laughs> That's seven seasons worth of 44 minute episodes, uh, and that's also not including the extended pilot, or the extended finale, or any other extended episode, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was pretty much staying up until five in the morning, turning off the Xbox, going to sleep until about 8 o'clock, and then waking up and watching more Star Trek until about 10 o'clock at night. Uh, turning off the Xbox, watching YouTube, and then getting back on Xbox an hour later and watching more Star Trek. So, we have made it, ladies and gentlemen, to the final sector. The Last Stand. But what's this? The video is ending. Who would do such a thing? Find out next time on Playable on Death.